Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. Alright, so the other day I went to go solder a wire and I couldn't find my soldering iron for the life of me. This is normally my go-to. It's basically just a, a gas of butane soldering iron. It's lasted me pretty good, cost me about 60 bucks. The tips are replaceable and you can change them out for a little blowtorch and things like that. But it works pretty good. The only problem is you've got to carry around a can of butane with you because you never know when it's going to it's going to uh, run out. I mean, for all fairness, uh, for automotive and things like that, it's quick enough just to do a quick soldering job. Uh, ETA is about 30 seconds for it to heat up. You do get quite a lot of heat from these little holes here, and if you're too close, you'll actually burn yourself. It's got a little gas indicator down the bottom here, a little uh, positive and minus for the actual flame, and you bring the gas on like that, you give it a click, and away you go. And then you wait for it to cool down, you put the lid back on, and hopefully your torch won't be all melted when you, uh, when you pick it up again. It's pretty good, it's just basically a big huge type of lighter. Look, I've used it, it rattles around in um, my electrics compartments, it hasn't caused me any troubles in the van, and it's been good. Only problem is it's hard to find when you need it. One time I didn't have it with me, and I went to JK Electronics, and I found this little device here, which was relatively cheap, it was under 20 bucks. And this is actually, a, believe it or not, it's a USB, USB soldering iron. And you can use this with a battery bank, and it actually does get hot enough that you can actually solder a wire. I mean, I wouldn't be sitting there doing a whole heap with it, but it's good enough to just solder the quick one little wire. So that got me uh, thinking, you know, this is my this is my backup, this is my main one, but where's the one for the garage or the workshop? Because I'm always taking these out of the van, and then I don't have one in the van, and I get caught out. Especially for electric strikes and things like that, or fixing a button, you do need the soldering iron. So I've decided to buy one, and I haven't tested this one yet. But here it is here. It's got the yellow and black, and if you watch my videos, you know that uh, I'm a fan of the yellow and black, the DeWalt colors. So I think it'll blend in quite nicely into my into my arsenal of power tools. All right, so cordless soldering iron, 60 watt adjustable temperature, auto sleep, auto off mode, detachable soldering irons, replacement soldering iron tips, which I thought is detachable soldering iron. Okay, battery optional, and it's got a couple of different tips on there. Anything more? Here we go. From 935 to 500 degrees Celsius, main temperature 212 Fahrenheit to 100 degrees C. So it should be F. Not sure, maybe that's back to front. 18 to 21 volts, 60 watt. Uh, total weight of the tool is 72 LBs. All right, let's give this a little testy. So that's the unit right there, and it demonstrated that it actually could take a DeWalt battery. It's got a little knuckle there, and obviously my DeWalt battery has a little knuckle there too, which has a lot of dust and stuff in it. All right, so we have our two terminals. All right, so that slides on, that's secure. Got enough battery juice in there. The instructions here, let's see what the instructions say. They come in German and in English. Procedure, temperature, welding station, it's got an error code. You can set the temperature, to power on, press the button for three seconds. Okay, let's take the plastic tip off to start with. Okay, so we've got ourselves just a very fine tip. There is a finer tip, and then there is the exact same tip, and then they just get bigger from there, and then you've got the knife one. You've got a little bit of sponge there as well, which you can put some water on if you wish to uh, pull the tip down or wipe the solder off. One, two, three, nothing. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, okay. Now it wants to work. So it's loading up and it's got a little thing there. I mean, there's no way I don't think that could be that temperature 200 degrees Fahrenheit straight away. And I'm not sure if we can actually, so that's at its maximum there. I'm not sure if we can set it to Celsius. Uh, okay, you can switch the from Celsius to Fahrenheit by pushing the power button. That's what it says. Obviously not. It's not the worst thing in the world. After switching on the temperature unit, F or C can be switched by pressing the power button and the minus button. Okay, let's try that. Ah, there we go. So 130 degrees Celsius, 136. Still cold to the touch. Let's see how long it actually takes for it to heat up. Uh, standby mode, batteries, uh, safety, heat hazard, child safety, training and experience, liability. So all that is fairly straightforward. Soldering iron station in standby mode when the pen has been after the pen has been out of use for 10 minutes. If the set temperature is greater than 200 degrees Celsius, the standby temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. 
So if we get up to there, we should be in standby mode. Right now we're at 1.30, but I really doubt we are. So I think it'd still be warming up. Okay, error. Okay, if the heating core feels an error, it'll come up ERR. You can move the temperature up with the buttons. Power button. Okay, so everything's fairly straightforward. All right. That's that one. Okay, it's been on for a minute. Let's plug this one in too. I've got a USB right here. Let's do that one. All right. It was a bit of an unfair race. Let's do this one here too. I don't want this one to burn my bench. I'll have to be careful. All right, so we're giving it a few minutes now. Just waiting for it to heat up. And we're going to see which one, uh, which one does what. Comes with a little bit of solder. When I mean a little bit, I mean a little bit. You get a whole a roll and there's like nothing on the roll. That's all right. Got some good old sticky tape holding it down. All right, so we did turn this one on first. This one has a, a reasonable size battery on it, so I'd be expecting it to come alive first because there was probably about 30 seconds before we fired up the other two. All right, solder test. Gas. Oh, yep, yeah, we're getting a little bit of smoke off that. USB. USB lights on. Why is that light not on? USB plugged in. Oh, that's an unfair test. All right, so we're at 130 degrees. And we're getting nothing. Take it all the way to 200. It reckons it's... Uh, and my gas one is ready to go. It's melting the solder. No smoke coming off that at all. As for the USB one, generally speaking, um, comparing it to this one, it was, wasn't too slow. I don't know why my USB is not producing power. There we go. It's got power now. So what's the time? Okay. So I'll just look at the time and then we can see that one. Just for comparison, so you can see kind of how long they will take. Um, as for the gas one, bang, bang, that's hot. So we can turn that off. That's that's at temperature. That's ready to go. This one here, this one we started up first. We're still not at temperature. Still not at temperature. All right, um, so we're using high quality solder wire, diameter 0.8 of a millimeter, 20 20, uh, 20 grams. I don't say what the makeup of the solder is, but it should be fairly stock standard. Hang on, we're getting a bit of smoke from the USB one, the one that we started up last. Oh, look at that. That's almost at temperature. It's heat heating up. And just to make sure that the battery power on this is two bars, 18 volt. So we're definitely getting smoke off that one. We're still getting smoke off this one too. Mm, no, that one's cooled down now. All right, so I've got this at its max at 60 watt and we yet to produce any smoke off it whatsoever. And it's not desirable to carry around a can of um, butane in your car, but on saying that too, looking at it from a different perspective, batteries are lithium iron, they're very, very flammable as well. So it's, it's all about how you, re, how you keep it and how you respect um, the battery and the gas when you're carrying it. So that shouldn't be a problem. So the most friendliest one I can say out of all of them would have to be the USB. Um, it's reasonably quick, it's cheap as, and it does the job. And there you go, we're melting. It's enough to solder. A, it's enough to solder an electric strike. Uh, there's no need to carry around battery or gas, and it, it does work. As with this one here, I don't think it's worth the space. I don't think it's doing its job at all. Look at that. So we're probably about 14, 15 minutes in now, and we get nothing off it, and it's at 200 degrees, and it's not even at that temperature. 
So I'm giving the cordless soldering iron station. They make these for all different types of models. So if you're a Makita, Milwaukee, they make them for all different. So I'm giving this a thumbs down. I think it's a piece of shit, to be honest with you. It's not doing what it's meant to be doing, and it's taking way too long. I mean, the race is already run and run and done. You know, these two have, have definitely demonstrated that. So yeah, not too happy with this one. I do like the soldering station as far as being able to keep it. You know, it's got a little bit of a plunge in there, so it keeps it nice and nice and tight. The heat of the soldering line is not going to burn anything. It's got this spring here to center, uh, so that's that's quite good. I'm still getting heat off that. Um, you know, the little pad here that's nice. The LED is nice, but I mean, if it's not doing the job, it doesn't have, matter how good it looks. It's a piece of shit. And yeah, that's a piece of shit. All right, leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching.